Let's worship the Lord here. came through this morning. Miss Bonnie is being taken down to uh, be checked out of the hospital. That's heavy on some of our hearts. And with the heaviness of this past week with the tragedy in Texas, we've been slapped in the face with there's a lot of ugly and sin in the world. The hope we have that our God, no matter what's going on, loves us and cares for us, carries us when we don't think we can go on, when there's no answers like there isn't right now for a lot of stuff, we can have a trust in a Father that is bigger than we are.
big circle if you're not with us this morning. Kind of just like family does. We're going to receive an offering. And if your tithes and offerings are here, I'm not going to expand a lot on it this morning. Just that everything we do, when you give of your time, talent, and resources through new creation, we pray over it and we do it for the, for the church and the body of Christ. Um, as we step out into new areas that God's been preparing us for all our lives for this day, that's why we receive tithes and offerings to pool our resources and to do things together that we could never do by ourselves. So let's, uh, let's pray. And I don't know how we're going to receive the offering, but we'll receive it somehow. If you're watching online, uh, there's a digital way to give. Look at the Bible app. Look at newcreationfmc.com. Newcreationfmc.com. There's a giving tab there. Uh, or you can send something to 1305 William Street. 1305 William Street. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this goodness of this day. Our hearts are concerned and heavy for our friend that is being taken to the hospital. But Lord, there. And, Lord, there is so much more as well. And I know that if Bonnie were able to talk to us, she'd be like, Come on, boys, get focused on Jesus. I'll be all right. So, Father, let us hold on to her confidence today. That you got it. Just like we sang, your love endures forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Father, for this Memorial Day weekend. And thank you for those that have given their lives so that we can have a space to gather uniquely today. Help us to always reach out and love on their families, those that lost their lives for our hope and freedom. 
Father, we thank you this day and bless this offering as we receive in Jesus' precious name and by the power of the Spirit we pray. Amen and amen. So there's going to be one coming around receiving the offering here. And I have offering those, those people that are counting in here this morning, I have offering in my car. So I will get it and bring it out to you after we're done here, okay? So, so a few moments of sharing here. It's kind of funny, I, I brought this up on my iPad, and I also have it on my computer. So if I just had one more monitor, I would feel like the president. I could just walk, walk around and talk everywhere, okay? So, um, so um, we have learned a few things in the past year, have we not? Have we learned a few things this past year? Well, not year, few years. Do you believe God has kept us, taught us, guided us, and loved us? Even though we've been wandering as a fellowship. Where are you guys going? Oh, they spilled a drink. Okay. Sorry, people online, I just had to make sure four people got up and I wanted to make sure I hadn't offended them just by asking a question. So, they were kids. So, all right, so, do you believe that God still keeps us, teaches us, guides us, and loves us? Do you? Because there might be some that go, mm, it's been tough. It's been tough. I do. I still believe. God does. And it's been tough on each of us. So a brief update today on a couple of things as we go forward. Like I said, this is going to be short as far as the message this morning. I was waiting for somebody to go, amen. But nobody did that. So. <laughs> because our mission today is unique, being a fifth Sunday. Okay? So a brief update. Why we are here at New NCCA to start out and not down there like we thought we were going to be. Real briefly. Not going to get into all of it. Um, initially, I was frustrated midweek this week. I was frustrated. I'm like, oh, God, what's going on? You know? It actually kind of sounded like that, too. You know? It wasn't just a little bit. It was, Barr! You know? And um, kind of, what's that? Like kind of like one of the Muppets. Sure. We'll go with that. Um, and uh, I was very frustrated. And now I see it. Now I see it as the hand of God working in us and through us. God is still leading. He's still teaching. Are you with me? You know what, guys? Why don't you move away from there as long as it's not on the floor. We'll clean it up later. Okay? Just move to another table or something. Yeah. That way and we can pay attention and everybody quits looking at you. <laughs> All right? Come on over and sit in other spaces. We had a spill here, for those of you that are online, have no concept as to what's happening. Thank you, Miss Melba. So, I believe this is not my timing. This movement, this space, this all this stuff is not my timing. Because if it would have been up to me, it would have been a few years back. Before our building started collapsing. Do you know I was the fourth pastor that said, I believe God is telling us to move out of this space on Arlington Avenue. Do you know that? I was the fourth pastor in a row that said, I believe God is asking us to, telling me that we should move out of this space. So it wasn't just my idea. <laughs> you know? Started way back with Paul Peterson, and then Pastor Dino, and Pastor Chris, and then me. You know? And, and it wasn't me, just me just complaining about it or anything. You know, and when we were working on the building, although a friend of ours, Ryan King, will say it's because he was too fat and he broke the building. That was not true. When we were doing wiring up there, we were actually setting the building up for a better ministry. And it was October, about eight months later, that something changed in our structure physically at that site. So, I, I took a little bit of time there. But to, why we're here is, as our attorney this week was preparing paperwork so that we could do the closing. The closing was to have been this past Thursday. He saw some wording in one of the documents that was like, that doesn't look right. Don't need to get into all of it because it's long and it's legal stuff. And honestly, I heard it about 85 times and I'm confused. But what it was, was it caused him some concern to ask some questions. 
So he got a hold of our real estate guy, Daryl. By the way, Daryl Adia has put in more hours for us this week, and he's not charging us anything for all this work. He's, he went to city council and chased down a couple of people, probably irritated one or two of them. But we got some answers, you know? And, 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 and he has really worked. He's probably put in 25, 30 hours for us this week, taking away from his other uh, stuff that he does. So he's really working hard. And so we got a hold of people. I got to meet with people. This is why I think it was a hand of God. I got to meet with people in city government I've never met before. Because they were asking questions. They're like, well, it's got to go this way. As we move forward and do things, we're getting noticed as we do things the right way. We could just do things. But you know, one thing that came to my mind as I was in the process, when, God said, when Jesus looked at one point, when he was questioned about paying taxes, and some of you remember what his response was. Give to Caesars what Caesars and give to God what's God's. Basically saying, if they're not asking you to do something against the scriptures, then do it the way the structure is currently set up. I got this. And God kept pushing at my brain when I was getting irritated with process and stuff. And God kept saying, do it the right way. I've made calls to different people. And we're getting noticed because we want to do it the right way. We could do it a roundabout way and probably get away with it for a while. But that isn't the image I want for our fellowship. I don't want somebody else at any point in time to be able to go, well, yeah, that church, you know what they did to get it around the corner. I wouldn't be able to go, wow, they did it right. Because who knows what God is setting up? Who knows what God is getting set up in the future that he's providing if they see us doing it the right way by golly, when they have a need like they have before, or if we have a need and we need to go, they're, not, they're going to look at us and go, wow, these people, they want to do it right. They don't want to make, our, make us look weird and have us have awkward things. They want to do it the right way. So that's why we're here. It's still going to happen. It's just a different process than we had thought. Okay? We must pray and trust in God's timing. We're in a learning process. And things are still moving forward. So we're gathering here in a place God provided. And how about this for some interesting stuff? It was two years ago on this Sunday was our soft opening at this church. Two years ago. Or at this location. That our fellowship met at this location. How about it? It was a soft opening. In other words, some of the leadership got together and we were still live streaming because we were coming out of that whole lockdown thing. And we were seeing if we could make it work right coming out. And then was two years ago next week that we opened up for the whole public to come in after we did some, some trial stuff. Okay? God has been providing. We have never been without a place to meet. Never. As much as I would have enjoyed it, we have never had to meet in a field. We chose to a couple of times, but we never had to. You know? We've had opportunity to prepare, and I believe God is still preparing us. By the way, this preparation thing and this process is going to take a little bit different time in our time, and it is going to still happen, like I said, as I'll get there. It's what missionaries do. They pray, don't they? Missionaries pray. They pray to prepare. They pray as they work. They pray for each other. They come back and they give reports and they ask for more prayer cover and ask for people to go with them. God leads in the steps and God will lead us in our steps. We have to be willing to follow even when we don't understand our words carry the ability to encourage or discourage. Our words. The words we speak carry authority in the physical and the spiritual realm, especially if we claim to know Jesus. So, that, so when we express our thoughts, let's keep them in a focused way that we're building up each other and building up even when we get frustrated. We can express questions. We can have differing opinions. And do it in a way that encourages and builds up, not tears down. A few years back, Susie and I were at a conference, and, and she, she was in a, a, a session. They were talking about when Walt Disney was doing things, and they were really doing things exceptionally well, and they were sending out these movies and doing a lot of creativity. They had a rule in their brainstorming sessions. The rule was this. Even if you thought an idea was dumb, you couldn't say that to the person. What you had to say was, hey, thanks for sharing. What about this? 
Because brainstorming is just that. Bringing ideas is just that. We need to build one another up because there is no better way than if somebody, especially if somebody is quiet or somebody is, is, is hurting, is when they finally have the courage to bring an idea or if they're sticking their neck out there and somebody goes, well, that's stupid. They'll never share again and they might not be with you anymore. Guarantee. But if we say, hey, you know what? Thanks for sharing. Because you might gain one little nugget out of Everything they shared, but that one little nugget, God's going to give you something and go, oh, wait a minute. That kernel right there, I can add a kernel here. And so on. And by golly, then we brainstorm and we really got something. When we all bring our stuff to the table, right? You know, got to clean the dirt off the diamond sometimes. We get a lot of dirt to get a little nugget of gold. We got to build each other up. So James even says, in the, from the same tongue there is blessing and cursing, and this should not be. So let's keep building up. So as we are today, and I'm going to be wrapping this up here in just a few moments. Today, we're going, to be, we're going to go out, like I said, and we're going to pray around the area of the new space. That's preparation. We're going to pray in preparation, in anticipation, not just over property. We're going to pray around the property. We're going to pray through the neighborhoods. Tina has maps of the area around that area, and we sectioned it off in chunks. So there's a big map right there, and she's holding up. And, 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 and the space on 725 Pearson is a dot in the middle, okay? And then the, we have an areas, we have six areas marked out. If we get to all of them, great. If we don't get to all of them, that's okay. You can keep your map. You can turn it back in. But we're going to pray around the areas. And we tried to break it up where there's more residences than businesses. But there's some businesses down there. And that's good. We've got to pray for them too. But as you go, we're going to pray around the area. It's a ministry outpost. I love that. A friend of mine in Rochester started using that. He said, the body of Christ is supposed to be on the move. The spaces we meet are ministry outposts. What do you do when it's in an outpost? You come back together, you meet together, you get resourced, you, you plug in. And it might even be a place where some other people come and work with you. But it's an outpost in an area that is not your own. Because guess what, folks? This world is not our home. If it is your home, you got your reward, and this, you're going to be really uncomfortable in this fellowship. Because this world is not our home. Heaven is our home. And when Jesus sets it right. So that's why the space we're going to is a ministry outpost where New Creation Church is going to meet. But other things are going to happen there too. And what happens if God, one of these days, well, we already have another outpost up on William Street, right? We have a mountain. So we can call it the outpost at Pearson and the outpost at William Street. And where new creation meets for worship here and does ministry here. And there's all types of these outposts that other fellowships have. What happens when God says, you're going to do stuff here and here and here? That's your outpost, but the church is on the move. The church is on the move. That's what the Ecclesia is about. Am I talking too much? I'm just about done. Okay? So this ministry outpost is a wonderful space. Pray there. And we're going to pray there. But as we pray around the neighbor... Oh, I found this quote when I was thinking about going out and preparing for this. Here's the quote. When we're going out and praying around the neighborhoods, because guess what? That neighborhood around there needs Jesus. You've heard me say I've met some people that live down that way, and they're excited that we're coming down there. That's why I am confident that when I talk to some people at the city this week and the mayor walked in, he goes, I don't have a vote. But by golly... I'll talk it up when, I, when we get there, when it comes up before the board. And, and, and I talked to the head of city council, and she goes, I'm supportive of you. You just got to go through the process so that we do it the right way. Nobody can call you into question. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I want us to look so good that when people in the community look at us, they're like, it was hard for them, but they did it the right way. You know? And uh, so as we take next steps, we'll explain more as we go. But here's this quote that I found out. When you hear the sights and see the sounds of a particular place, you understand better how to pray for the people of that location. That's why we're going out here for the next 45 minutes to hour. When you hear the sights and sounds and see the, the things of a particular place, you better know how to pray. We get to share the Word of God. We're going to pray around. Maybe there's going to be somebody outside wondering why you're walking up their street. Maybe they're, or you're driving up their street slow and they're going, why are you driving up our street slow? You don't live here. What's going on? And you get to engage them and say something simple like, 
How you doing? Hello, good morning. We're part of a fellowship that's going to be moving into the area. We're trying to get to know our neighbors. Is there anything I can pray for you about? How hard is that? Now, you might not run into anybody. But you might. And if you do, just be polite. And you know what? If somebody says, no, I don't want your Jesus. Okay, have a great day. And you move on. And you bless them anyway, quietly. Don't bless them again to their face. They might give you signs you don't want to see. You know, <laughs> but you bless them anyway. You bless them anyway. Because God's planting seeds with us as we go. I was talking to Brett Householder. He gave me an observation. He said, all my years of living in different places, I have never once had a Christian church come up and walk through my neighborhood and ask me if they could pray for me. Never once. He said, I've lived in a lot of communities in two different states. Never one time has a Christian church ever come up and talked to me. There have been some other churches come out and talk to me door to door. He goes, that's messed up. We're supposed to be engaging and loving on people. And you know when I've done it? Mainly when I've been on mission trips. We walk around areas and we talk to people. And I've had people give me the number one sign that wasn't this finger. It was a different one, you know what I mean? When I, and they weren't saying we were number one. You know, because they were angry with God. You know? Happened when we were walking around doing Hurricane Katrina relief. People had lost their home. There was a foundation and they were cleaning up. And they didn't want to hear anything about our Jesus. But we loved them and prayed for them anyway. You know? Okay. So, as you go, whether you're slowly driving or you're walking, praying over these people in some places, observe and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Just a couple thoughts here. And somebody look up Ephesians 6.10 and we're going to be on our way. Be humble before God. Don't tell God, hey God, be humble. Listen to God and go with what the Spirit is leading us to do. And you're going to be wow as what happens. Suit up. We're in a spiritual battle. Put on the heavenly armor. We pray and we go out as missionaries to people that may not know Jesus. Now there might be some that do, but there are people that may not know. And the community garden is a half a block away from us. And Kenny Rice is stoked we're coming down there. When I saw Kenny and I said, hey, we're trying to get that space, he looked at me and goes, oh, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. We need somebody else down there. And I'm like, all right, Kenny, let's go, man. He's excited we're coming down. Unless... The Lord Jesus has set these people free. They are under the influence of the enemy. So we need to pray for them. And I found this on a website. They said five things to remember. This is their thoughts. Be alert. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Be ready. Be a doer. And be on the lookout for God at work. That's just their thoughts. We get to be those hands and feet. And if you wonder if prayer walking is an idea, that's what Nehemiah, or just us, Nehemiah walked around the city and said, God needs to do something here, and God gave him the opportunity to rebuild in his time. Other places all through the Bible we see it. Anybody got Ephesians 6.10 for me? Anybody look that up? Jake, go ahead. Read, the, read, read, read it for us, please. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord. And in His mighty power. That's what I'm challenging you with to go on. Don't be strong in yourself. The enemy will beat us up. We strong in the Lord. God will wow us even if we're in a situation that is unfamiliar. Alright? So we're going to hand these maps out. We're going to head out of here. And between 12.15 and 12.25, we're going to head out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. We're going to do, I was going to do that too when we came back, but we'll do that right now. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Given that we're going on the prayer walk, can I actually continue that through 13? Because I think it's all a little bit of what we're going If you want, sure. Go ahead. So Ephesians 10 through 13. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Amen.
So we're going to put that full armor on. If you want a couple of scriptures to go out with, Acts chapter 2, verse 24 to 31. And Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 41. 24 to 31 and 37 to 41, Acts 2. Those are a couple of verses that can encourage you and challenge you as we go out. Okay? Um, Sally just asked me if she could stand in the gap. And we're going to pray. We'll pray over her for Bonnie. And we're going to anoint her in that space. So, Brandon, could you just move that back a little bit? And we're going to pray for Bonnie. And uh, Sally's going to be standing in the gap and, 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 and pour that for her. And that's, that's putting Sally in a challenging spot. Why don't you move out just a little bit? Okay. There we go. And we're just going to pray for Bonnie right now. So, Bonnie, if you're watching, we're praying for you. Father, we thank you in this day. Lord, as we anoint Sally, as she stands in the gap, she's already had her own physical issues, and she doesn't need any more. But she has chosen, even in her physical condition and the struggles she's been going through, to stand in the gap for a sister that's another prayer word. So, Lord, I pray for her today. I lift her, I lift Sally up to you first today, that she will be strengthened and lifted as we lift people, that she will be lifted herself, that she would receive this blessing. If she is going out in faith, and she is stepping out in faith, that she would be well taken care of as well. And Lord, that, and, and we come before you for Bonnie today. Lord, we ask that you would uniquely touch Bonnie, that she would know in her spirit that you powerfully love her. That while her body is, is, is not what she wants it to be, and she's been having these issues, and she's a little stubborn sometimes, Lord, you know that better than we do. And, and Father, and she, she maybe should have got checked out before she's getting checked out now, and we thank you. What happened in the past is the past, today is today. And Father, we pray that you uniquely touch her, and as Sally is standing in the gap, as a protection week, stand with Sally. And we pray that the docs and the nurses would maybe find something that, that, that would bring relief, that would bring strength, that would bring vitality to her bones. Lord, that would bring a, that, that joyful step back to her spirit, that she wouldn't be wobbly because she's dizzy physically, but she just might be wobbly because she's crazy in love with Jesus. Lord, I ask for this time right now, and I pray that we would have good reports soon because we stand with her. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 On the way to church this morning, I was listening to the Christian radio station, and I've heard this story before, but I think it applies so much before we go out today. And that's the story of a little boy that's on the beach, and he sees thousands of starfish just abandoned on the beach and an old man's watching this little boy as he's throwing each starfish into the sea and then he goes son you're wasting your time he said it's overwhelming there's nothing you can do the little boy picks up the starfish and he throws another one in and he said I made a difference to that one and he picked up another one and he threw it in the sea and, said, and I made a difference to that one so it might not reach them all but I made a difference to one Amen. Love that. Love that. So, Tina, you got the maps? So we got maps right here. They didn't get too scared today. Okay. We got the maps right here. Um, my suggestion is that you would head down, and, and I have room in my car. I don't know if my wife has, but we can put some people in. We can ride together. Go down to Pearson Street and then fan out into your areas. We'll start at the parking lot. But then when you get done, come on back up here and we're going to eat together. Okay? So if you want to look at the big map, you can. How we broke it up. Just point of reference. This is the church. This is Taylor Street Go around here. If you guys know what Taylor Street is. Down the hill and bears to the right. So if anybody takes Quadrant 1, you're going to be going up the hill a little bit behind uh, the other side of Taylor Street. All the other areas, th this goes up the hill toward the, the football field. Do you know we are four-tenths of a mile from the Newcastle football field? 
How cool is that? We, somebody already gave me a great idea, but that's for another time. Uh, we, this, some of these areas look a little smaller again because where there were concentrations of houses, we made those there, we tried to make them, we'll see how we did. So if you want to come up, what Tina did here was she broke them up. So this is quadrant one. And if you want to do that area, there's four or five sheets. Four sheets in each one, so a group of people can grab quadrant one, um, and then so on through six. So grab one and get with a group of people, pray for each other, keep singing, and head on out. And I'll take what you all don't. And if you, they're all taken up, you know, and you can go with more than just the people at your table. So come out and grab them. Like I said, there's four to the thing. Thank you for joining us today.